Okay, thanks everyone. Um, it's a big ask to talk about genetics in five minutes, but I'm gonna do my best and jump in and hopefully you come away with some insights. Um, so really, what I'm gonna be talking about today is genomics and kind of the impact on the future of healthcare. Um, I think we can probably agree, everyone in this room is aligned on the fact that prevention really is the best medicine. I think it's something we've known for probably uh, over 100 years at this point. Um, so it's common knowledge, but not common practice. And so what I'm gonna to talk to you today about is how genomics will actually usher in this age of prevention, finally. So when I'm talking about, for the purpose of this talk, I'm talking mostly about predictive or proactive um, genetic and genomic testing. Um, and essentially how this is gonna happen or why this is gonna happen is that because these technologies and, and this information will force our clinicians to actively focus on well care versus sick care. Um, so for those of you uh, uh, who don't, who don't, aren't familiar with MedCan, I'll give you a quick snapshot. Um, and what I'm going to do in the remaining four minutes is go through um, some of our data and give you a sense of what we're actually seeing happening in real time. It's a hugely exciting uh, time in our field, and I think, uh, I hope you'll, you'll come away with that sentiment as well. Um, so just quickly, MedCan is a preventative and health um, wellness clinic. Uh, we're based in downtown Toronto and essentially... Um, focus on seeing healthy people who kind of want to stay healthy and, and increase quality of life. Um, so genetics is one program that we offer and, and uh, we do a program called proactive genetic screening. Um, and so this was something we've been doing for over a year now and what we did was look back at our first 1300 clients. Um, this is a panel of about 147 genes where we um, are looking for uh, risks for hereditary cancers and hereditary heart disease primarily. Um, and there's a few other conditions thrown in there as well, um, but all things that are actionable. So if you come back with a positive result, there's gonna be um, an action that can be taken in order to reduce your risk. Um, so when we looked back at our data, we found that 14% 14 per, uh, 14 of our clientele came back with a positive genetic test result. This is significantly higher than we would have anticipated based on what's um, published in the literature right now. Um, it works out to about one in seven people um, getting a positive result. If you dig into that data a little bit more and look at the positive results, about 70% of those are related to hereditary cancer risk. So this is things like BRCA1 and 2. Um, there's over 20 breast cancer related genes uh, on the panel as well as a number of other cancer types. Um, and then 28 related to hereditary uh, cardiac risk. Most importantly though is that 80% resulted in a change in medical management. Um, and so what this means is these test results are, are given back to the uh, physicians and um, we are lucky that we kind of work alongside our physicians um, who are taking that information and then actioning on it and actually changing somebody's uh, long-term plan. So if you take this woman who uh, went, through our, went through our screening program and she came back with a positive result, what this means for her is that she is now getting colonoscopy screening at age 40 every five years rather than waiting until she's 50 um, and getting it every 10 years. Um, a few other kind of interesting points of data, uh, about 65% of individuals who went through our uh, testing and came back positive uh, had, a fam uh, had no family history of the condition. So in genetics, we typically use family history as kind of the gold standard in terms of uh, how we um, measure who is at higher risk. This is telling us that that tool is really not as robust as, as we've always thought. Um, and the other interesting thing is that only 7% of these individuals would have qualified for government-funded genetic testing. So we use criteria to try and figure out who should have genetic testing in order to increase risk. We know that our current systems are um, missing, missing people. So if you think about kind of the continuum and, and the life cycle, um, right now uh, there is a lot of this, this testing being done in small pockets. Um, we focus primarily on kind of the, the adulthood and, and onward um, sector, but we do see this playing out um, in other ways. So there are researchers and groups that are looking at doing whole genome sequencing on newborns, for example, on newborn screening um, samples, um, and also prenatally. So these are things that are happening. I think um, there is a huge uh, opportunity for these technologies to be used for good and to um, help change people's lives and actually help us prevent disease. Um, my ask to you, if you are working in a um, startup or an organization in the genetic space, <coughs> excuse me, is that, um, is that you, if you don't have a genetic counselor on your team, find one. Um, we are an army of professionals who are focused primarily on um, 
making sure that you have responsible access and use to this information, and um, hopefully we'll, we'll all be better for it. Thank you.